What highly illegal thing took place at your high school? Story one. So a kid in the grade ahead of me ended his sister behind the school. An acquaintance of mine helped him bury the body. This guy was in my English class when I was a sophomore. He was a junior. He was a tennis star on the school team. He seemed really straight laced. I didn't know his sister. It's rumored that he took advantage of her and she was going to tell, but it was just a rumor. What did happen though was that they had an argument behind the school and he hit her over the head with a flashlight. He and his friend, a guy I knew casually, buried her in a shallow grave outside of town. FYI, small town, central Oregon. I'd link to the case, but it's hard to find anything online. This happened in about 1987, pre internet. Anyway, she was just missing for some time, many months, when hunters discovered the grave and everything went from there. If anyone can find the information online, that would be pretty cool. I can't find anything. The guy's name is Brian Ford, and this happened in Bend, Oregon in about 1987. I found an excerpt from an article. In July 1987, when Brian learned that his younger sister, Brenda Ford, was planning on running away from the family home, Brian lured her to an isolated area where he first hit her with a flashlight and then gagged her. Brenda Ford's remains were not discovered for three months. At trial, mental health experts testified that not only did Brian Ford know right from wrong, but that due to his perverse rearing, Brian felt that he was right in having ended his sister's life. Brian Ford, a minor, received a great plea deal. A second-degree manslaughter plea got him kitty jail until he was 18, and then a minimum of 102 months in prison. What on earth? The worst thing that happened to my school was some kids getting caught for bringing booze to school. My school's boring, I guess. Story 2. We had a guy selling d After that, there was a weekly police presence. Yeah, this guy was a big d and in with that crowd. I'd known him for five years or so before he did these runs, and that whole time he'd been on the scene. He is a few years older than me, but I met him through skating and riding. He used to do a weekly d run. He'd take a literal brick of snow and some d on his push bike between towns every month. He used to brag he was paid 1,500 pounds every time he did this and would regularly show off the packages at the skate park before making his journey. I reconnected with a few of my skating friends recently after moving away. It seems he's still involved to some degree. Also, a kid bound a girl to a chair, put a gag on her, and stuffed her in a cupboard in the woodworking shop. He claims it was to help her complete the sponsored silence she had been doing that day. He was a weird kid. I think he was suspended for a while, but I definitely remember seeing him at school the next year. He was in a lot of special needs classes and rehabilitation at the school, so I wonder if that's why. This kid also threw a weapon at another student. It missed a kid, thankfully. The problem was that he was kept in normal classes, and as everyone knew he was weird, he was tormented constantly until he lost his temper. He's got kids now, which is equally concerning and surprising. In hindsight, my school was pretty bad because there had been more stories. The one that immediately comes to mind would be the following. In year 10, a fight broke out in our English class that was being taught by a substitute teacher who had zero control over us all. It ended with a couple of broken desks and people getting hurt, a fairly standard affair. However, in the previous class, the substitute used a permanent marker on the whiteboard instead of dry white pen. She had used hydrochloric acid from the science lab as a way of removing the stains from the board, but had left the glass bottle on her desk. The fight ended with the bottle being smashed into someone's face, rendering him partially blind in one eye, and still having scarring from the glass. This one was really bad. The other one that comes to mind is a little messed up. Basically, my dad's friend was the accountant for the school. When the school went into special measures, she had to review the accounts for seven years. Upon review, she saw some $100,000 had gone missing. When she queried this with the head teacher, she lost her job. It's highly suspected that he'd been skimming money for his whole tenure. Oh, we also had a science teacher who had to leave after she was caught sleeping with the science head. Story 3. My ex brought a weapon to school and threatened to harm me and my new boyfriend. He also actually brought a bladed weapon at one other time, except instead of threatening to harm me, he just carved my name into his arm and then tried to cauterize the wounds with a lighter. It was a little messed up. This happened in the Philippines about eight years ago. Our high school wasn't on the K-12 system, so we had four-year levels and around 80 students per year. 
This was in our third year, we were all the same year, and everybody involved kept going to that school. The rest of the students and faculty heard about it, and eventually it got to some parents. The mother of my new boyfriend did not appreciate the fact that her son was threatened with a gun, so she tried to take legal action. The mother of my ex-boyfriend did not appreciate this, and since my ex and I had a turbulent history, which I've posted it about here, she tried to take legal action as well. Nothing ever came of either of those attempts, though. He didn't get suspended, he didn't get into any trouble for it at all, and actually graduated with honors, I think. The professors didn't offer counseling to any of us. There were no heightened security measures, no seminars on safety. My parents initially didn't believe my account of it and didn't file a restraining order. The whole mess was basically swept under the rug. He didn't get into any trouble for it at all. Still a little bit bitter about that, lol. Small schools and small provinces can be pretty messed up. Story 4. We had a softball coach who slept with his students, but there is a far more interesting story that didn't technically take place on school grounds. There was this kid who was constantly being roughed up. They would even follow him after school and storm him. So there was this hardware store across the street, and a lot of kids would hang out in the parking lot after school. The tormentors chased the kid inside and cornered him in the garden section. They kept hurting him, so the dude grabbed an axe from one of the shelves and just started swinging. All the perpetrators ended up in the hospital with various injuries. The security camera got the whole thing but I can't remember now if Gimli's son of Gloin was charged or if it was ruled self-defense. I followed up with my sister, who actually knew the kids involved better than I did. She was closer to their age. The news articles that came out at the time didn't really talk about the pattern that led to the axe kicking, but she did confirm that Gimli was sent to juvenile corrections for a while. She remembered when he got out, and as far as she knew, he was doing well. I left things vague, but apparently this incident was unique enough that people have found some of the news articles. There are more details about the subsequent legal action for interested parties. Well, that kid certainly gave new meaning to axing your problems. I'm just hoping they all learn some valuable life lessons. Story 5. A little bit of a backstory first. Our school had a big renovation ongoing, and because of that, almost half of the school was closed down. The closed down part included the biggest bathrooms, and because of that, the school administration ordered two toilet barracks to be placed on the schoolyard. So, some 7th to 9th graders decided to buy some toilet pipe opener liquid, I don't know what the correct term is, and aluminum foil. They put the aluminum foil inside some plastic bottles and poured a little pipe opener into them with the foil. Someone who has probably done this before already knows what's going to happen next. They stuck six bottles total inside the toilet bowls in every stall of one barrack and blew them up due to the chemical reaction between the foil and the opener. All the piping in the single barrack was destroyed due to water pressure inside the pipes. It turns out that the two barracks had connected piping, and the water that was in the bowls in the other barrack shot up to the ceiling due to the pressure. The students never got caught, and if I remember correctly, the incident ended up costing a hefty amount for the school administration. The barracks were taken away and replaced with new ones. After the incident, every recess, there was a teacher in front of the barracks monitoring everyone going in and going out. Nothing happened to the new toilets. Story 6. I went to an incredibly lousy school in London that was in special measures. By the time I left, after a year with about 50% attendance and three U grades at A level, it is apparently doing fairly well now since it has been amalgated into the fold of a local superhead who runs several schools across the surrounding boroughs, but I will pace what I shared last time, since people seemed to like it then. We had many, dog or hammer fight in my first week. Rush day, one day per year, the kids in year 7 would just get randomly roughed up. A couple of troubles per year, kid locked the woodwork teacher in the toilets, the woodwork teacher kicked the door off its hinges and set about the kid in the very same way. Someone stole all the computers from the computer room, A kid was s**t and all his clothes and belongings were doused in lighter fluid and then burned. The head teacher left for lunch one day, never came back. Our only person making the timetables was the administrator and business teacher. Passed away during a class. Starting the following year, no classes were organized for two months, graduation year A2 to boot, but we still received weekly notices about attendance during that period. The history teacher got pregnant with another teacher. Conception is apparently on site. They weren't in a relationship. Someone started a rumor that she was violated and he was also a kitty fiddler. 
He had to leave the school. Superhead brought us in to get us ship shape, known for taking no BS and turning schools around. Made her quit her entire decades long career. We couldn't hire new teachers. The woodworking department was abandoned after the previous incident. Kid trapped another kid in there with a mind to reenact some hostile stuff. Story 7. Two students planned and carried out a coordinated strike on one of the math teachers by waiting by the top of the stairs between periods, and when he passed by them to go down the steps, one of them pushed him from behind, while the other put his leg out to trip him. The teacher fell down the steps and was paralyzed from the neck down. The kids' reasoning? Because one of them was dropped from the basketball team because he was failing that teacher's math class. Both of them were not even legal, so they didn't even get jail time. They both got expelled and were sent to juvenile detention. The teacher sued the school district and got a settlement in the lower seven-digit range. A seven-figure settlement. Hmm, but paralyzed. No thanks. Story 8. The drama teacher slept with the hottest girls in class and nothing ever happened to him. The reason nothing came of it is because the girls were consenting and never told anyone. To them, it was a fling that they chose. But as an adult now, you look back at a guy in his 30s sleeping with at least two juniors and criminal is the only word that comes to mind. He was the coolest guy in the room, to women and even to most of the guys. But my group was always like, this guy is too cool. Something doesn't feel right here. His ability to seamlessly shift between being a teacher, an authority figure, and a peer was impressive at the time. Now I would probably see right through it. And obviously, aided by some oblivious parenting that allowed the girls free reign to rehearse plays as much as they wanted, including at his house. I don't think they knew about this, including Saturday nights until 2 to 3 a.m., sometimes one-on-one. It seems insane now, but a cult of personality can get you a lot of rights that you wouldn't have otherwise. Story 9. A special education kid got jumped by a dude on his way to school and was roughed up pretty badly. The whole thing was recorded by the dude's girlfriend and her friend. The whole time, they were cheering him on, yelling things like, world star, and so on. She later posted it on Instagram, which angered everyone, and just about everyone wanted to rough up the dude in the video. He was given temporary suspension, BS, while the police took care of him. From what I know, he was charged, but I forget the exact charges. Also, side note, there was a girl at my school who was in minor league boxing who was ready to rough him up. She even tried looking for him by his house. For those wondering if the boxer would have won the fight, I can confirm that she was a hell of a lot bigger than the guy. In comparison, he was a pretty skinny dude. Huge props to that boxing champ. She's an absolute legend. I'm wondering and eager to know if she's still on the hunt. If you guys got the inside scoop, please do drop a like and subscribe to my channel and let us know in the comments section below. Let's uncover the epic story behind this one. Story 10. Not my school, but a friend's. Two students threw a chair from a balcony. They hid an eight-month pregnant teacher. She passed out. The principal refused to let an ambulance evacuate her from school grounds because it had tattered their school's reputation. So she had the custodian bring the pregnant teacher out of the school and only then did she call the ambulance. The teacher has had a stillbirth consequent to that incident. The most infuriating thing is, the perpetrators were never caught, nor was the principal punished for what happened. Story 11. We had a pretty controversial case involving a handicapped student who had cerebral palsy and muscular dystrophy. His parents filed a lawsuit accusing two of his handlers of maltreating him by dumping him out of his chair and forcing him to wear a neck brace so he'd look them in the eye. The worst part was that I don't think the handlers suffered any real consequences. I looked up articles on it and all of them highlight the maltreatment and lawsuit, but none follow through with the results, which is frustrating. Story 12. I interviewed to teach at a high school once. One of the questions from the school board was, can you avoid sleeping with your students? Me? Yes. Yes, I can. The school board thinks I'm great and the principal thinks I'm great. The superintendent of schools doesn't think I'm cut out for the job and gives me the runaround. The principal is trying to help me push through it and get hired, but I finally give up and get a normal job elsewhere. The superintendent hires his nephew, wonder why he gave me the runaround, who promptly did the dirty with a student and gets fired. I still see the principal occasionally. He always apologizes. I wanted to hire you. He's way too nice to have been stuck at that lousy school. Story 13. 
Probably the Kitty Fiddler cult masked as a NAAA group that met in the basement somewhat regularly. It was a pretty big group. I can't remember the name, though. They marketed themselves as a place for people, especially young people, to go get clean and be around sobriety. They also enjoyed socially engineering the group, particularly in the form of placing young girls with far older men as quote-unquote sponsors. I had two friends who were in the group. They made themselves out to be the perfect community and one that was accomplished, pairing off happened. The men they were put with told them that they'd get kicked out if they didn't do intimate things with them. There's more to it, I think. But it's been a long time since I've heard the stories, but that's basically the gist of it. I should also add that the people running the show endorsed under the quote-unquote sponsor knows best guys. Story 14. An explosion exploded just in front of our school when I was in middle school. We were studying when it happened. There was a big smoke, glasses were shattered, and everybody rushed outside as soon as they heard the explosion. I just stood dumbstruck in my seat for at least 10 seconds before being able to move. Years later, this is still the most overwhelming experience of my life. That was in 2008 when I was still living in Algeria. We had some very horrible years in the 90s due to the rise of trouble because of some political issues. It continued a little bit during the early 2000s, but it's all better now. That attack that happened near us was the last major one we've had. Whoa, that's insane. I'm just glad this dude and his classmates are okay. Story 15. A kid got together with all his friends and got private photos of girls from school. They burned a DVD with all the pictures and started selling it. Well, the principal found out, and instead of turning it over to the police, he got a copy and was caught to it in his office. The school swept it under the rug, and he used some kind of clause in his contract, basically saying they couldn't legally say anything about it. He quietly retired, and they got a new principal. This happened after I got out of school and we used to always joke that he was a kitty fiddler. It was some crazy stuff. Story 16. The high school coach didn't keep tabs on our team during a week-long beach trip to play games in Florida. Parents supplied kids with booze and one of my teammates snapped his neck diving into the ocean. The sandbar in the ocean wasn't noticeable. Mix it with a large amount of alcohol and when you dive headfirst, well, that's all it takes. Ocean wasn't noticeable. The coach got fired and the kid was paralyzed. Literal chaos within our baseball program ensued. It was awful. I transferred. Story 17. Our band classroom was by the cafeteria and soda machines. There was this kid who always used to go absolutely crazy, like punch teachers and throw chairs crazy. One day, we see the vice principal dragging him by his hoodie while he is flailing and trying to hit him. Eventually, I think he had had enough and slammed this kid into the soda machine. Like, full-on threw him so hard, he went through the plastic on the front of it. And as far as I know, he never got in trouble for it because the kid was an absolute demon. This was about 6th grade? Story 18. Our computer teacher was using school equipment to pirate all kinds of stuff. This was around 2000-2002-ish, and the guy was a dot-com millionaire who used his teaching job to just hang out with high school kids and have fun in a non-creepy way. We spent his class building and upgrading our personal gaming machines, and he had a big CD case full of pirated operating systems and software. He'd use the budget the school gave him for hardware to buy the latest and greatest video cards, and our final for that class was a Quake 3 tournament. A group of his favorite students also worked at Blockbuster, so they'd take the pre-release DVDs to him, rip them, and upload them to piracy sites from the school's internet servers. On 9-11, I remember being in his class watching a cam version of the latest Spider-Man movie. That class was cool, but honestly, you didn't learn a lot unless you were in the in-crowd of the nerds. For your entire education career, the model was to sit down, open your brain, and ingest knowledge. In this setting, it was a lot more like a modern IT workplace where you have to raise your hand and say, Hey, I don't understand how that works. Explain it to me. It was fun, which is why it had to end. This was actually after Columbine and the dude was having ammo mailed to the school so he could go to the shooting range with students after class. He lived on a boat. Weird dude, but in a quirky way, not like a I need to spend time with kids because, uh, reasons kind of way. Story 19. One afternoon after school was over, a couple of kids started an illegal substance deal. The basher, Goliath, we'll call him that. He lived up to that name too, absolute unit, was a renowned who did everything known to men, and the banshee, whom I'll call Carl, tried to sell Goliath some strong enough to kill a baby elephant. 
Goliath proceeds to take some and test it out on the spot, but proceeds to notice that it is a bit weaker than promised and is basically no stronger than water. Goliath, a bit angry that he was undersold, grabs Carl and roughs him up pretty badly. Goliath snaps back to reality, realizing what he just did and runs like a madman as anyone in that situation would. He was caught, however, and given a long sentence. I'm not sure how he is now, though. I wasn't there to witness it in action, so take this with a grain of salt. A lot of it is what I just heard. However, I did see the evidence with my own eyes and Carl's quick, most definitely not open casket funeral. Hey, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy what was the incident that happened at your school. You're definitely not going to expect the ending to story number five. I'll see you in that video.